champions, two to one. In the standings, the Mariners are in second place in the AL. Festivities are wrapping up. This place is rocking. The home opener is coming up next. Here in Milwaukee, MLB The Show with a good one coming at you. It's the New York Mets and the Milwaukee Brewers. Joined by my partner, Chris Singleton, I'm John Shomby. These fans get to see their team at home for the first time this season, Singy, and they want to help create a spark for their squad. Well, clearly there's no place like home, Boog. A few road games didn't go their way to start the season, but they're at home now looking to right the ship. Should be a lot of excitement in the park today. All right, we'll be back to get this one started after this. So, almost ready to get underway. And today's starter, Eric Lauer. What's the scouting report on him? Well, last year, kind of around the league average in terms of ERA. And you know what? That's why you have five different spots in the starting rotation. You've got to have people round things out. And not everyone's going to pitch like a number one or number two every outing or every season. But last year, he gave his team an opportunity and a chance to win every time he took the mound on average. And when you look at that kind of performance, it has a place on every ball club. One ball, two strikes. Knocks that one away, and we'll do it again. In the dirt. Sends it to first. One out in the top of the first. Perfectly executed 12-6 curveball right there. And with that kind of break, if you can drop it in below the zone like that, it's going to look like a strike the entire way coming in and then just disappear. So hard to get under the ball unless you're really gearing up for it and you might need a pitching wedge. Jeff McNeil stands in. Check swing and he held up. The line to kick the pitch. Swing and a ball lifted in the air. Shallow left field. Yount calls it in, and there's two away. Here's a Mets lineup now. It includes a guy with a big season last year, Jeff McNeil. Boogie ended up hitting over 320 last year. I mean, 320, that's just another level. I mean, 300 is a goal that every guy has, but 320 is just comfortable in that range. And catch this. He told me he thinks he can do even better this season. Crazy. Nope. Next one misses, and it's 2-1. and one. The pitch. Hey. Looks like he's just sizing him up there. Really good pitch to hit, but he took it all the way. Sometimes guys just want to set their timing later on in the game. That may be a pitch that he turns on. Misses, and it's three and two. Caught a break right there. Pretty good pitch on the outside corner. No score just getting started top of the first. That smash towards center. Pulls up on it, and that's a base hit. Just so that's sound in his mechanics. Hits against, against a firm front hmm. side, and the oh, hands oh, oh, oh. just continue to carry through the middle of the field. Two outs, runner at first. Pete Alonso up now for the Mets. On the ground, and it goes just foul. 
A couple of quick nuggets on Pete Alonzo. He graduated from the same high school as Wade Boggs, Plant High School in the Tampa area. And Alonzo also played at the University of Florida. He was teammates there with Harrison Bader. Spoils the two-strike pitch, and he'll see another. Hernandez leads off first with two down to the inning. Swing and a ground ball up the middle. That's a base hit. Lead runner touches second, headed for third. And now they'll have runners on the corners with two away. Gotta love the resiliency he showed in that oh, bat, yeah. battling with two yeah, strikes. Yeah. Pitch was on the outside, didn't yeah. go the other way with it, but still yeah. a nice job of using the big part of the field to find a hole. No way he hits it that well if he hooks around the baseball there. Now here is David Wright. And a count one and two. Well, he knows they don't want to give him anything to hit, but when you've got opportunities to drive in runs, you've got to expand the zone. He's capable of going out there and doing damage with it. Blows the high heat past them. That's a strikeout. A couple of hits in the inning, but they can't get him home. Bottom half of inning number one coming up. No score after a half inning. Back here at American Family Field. And today's starting pitcher, David Peterson. Well, most pitchers today are pretty tall, but this guy's definitely taller than most. He's kind of an imposing figure out there, especially when he's standing on top of the bump. It's like he's looking down on you, so hitters have to be prepared for a couple of things. Ball can get on you a lot quicker because of the extension and release point, and then also tilt through the zone. If you're going to try to hit pitches at the bottom of the zone, it's going to be difficult to get on plane. So look for something up from this guy. You might have a chance to do some damage. Next offering is in for a strike. One ball, two strikes. Right through there, got him. Down on strikes, and he knew it. And now Ryan Broad. Ball to strike. And now one and two. That's to third, into the outfield, base hit. So a man aboard now with one away. Really nice job of two-strike hitting in that at bat. Handled that down and in breaking ball very well. I saw the break early coming from the other side and just let it get deep enough and drop the barrel on it at the very last moment. And now let's see if they force some action with the wheels on the bases. Peterson keeping an eye on him. Another move to first. And he's back in that time as well. Next to hit, Robin Yell. Next pitch is outside. And here it comes. Bounced up the middle. Sneaks through, base hit. Lead runner makes the turn at second. To third, not in time. And it's runners at the corners with one gone. Back-to-back -back singles. Really nice job staying up the middle with his approach. He didn't try to do too much with the pitch. Just shot it through the infield. Prince Fielder up now for the Brewers. The next pitch misses. Now two balls and a strike. Well, the best way to shake off yesterday's struggles is to get on the board early. They've got a guy in scoring position. They've got to find a way here to get him in. Just missed. If he's able to connect on that, look out. Lefty out of the stretch, runners at first and third. 
Swing and a pop up in foul ground. Nobody can get there, and it's a foul ball. Left hand hitter waits. Cuts on it and misses. That's a strikeout. Blew the express right by his bat for strike three. Certainly a strikeout situation right there. The infield playing back, and this pitcher has to step on and get the swing and miss. Really nice job of attacking the hitter at the plate. Pretty big two out at bat coming up now. And now it's William Contreras. Outfield playing very deep, not wanting anything over their heads. Next offering is fouled back. Really going after him here. All fastballs to get ahead in the count. And now the lefty. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Pulled the string on the changeup. Brewers come up empty in the first. Through an inning in Milwaukee. No score on the show. Welcome back. New inning getting started. Here's Francisco Lindor. Francisco Lindor. And he hits a ground ball right side. He'll do it himself. And a quick out number one. Batting seven. The center fielder, number nine. Here's Brandon Nimmo. Nimmo. Ball to strike. The pitch. On the ground right side. He steps on the He's bag. Out. And a couple of quick outs. Batting it. The catcher. Francisco. Francisco Alvarez. Francisco Alvarez. Up now for the Mets. And the pitch. Tosses to first, third out, and that ends the frame. No runs, no hits, no errors. We go to the bottom of inning number two. We're tied, nothing, nothing. Bottom of the second. Up now for Milwaukee, Greg Vaughn. The designated hitter, Greg Vaughn. 3-2. And that one is lifted in the air. Dives, but it falls. And now it looks like extra bases. Around second now, going for three. The throw to third, and he's out trying for three. Really nice job of hitting right there. But you've got to be a better base runner than that and understand the situation. With nobody out, you've got to be able to shut it down, stay at second, keep yourself in scoring position instead of killing a potential rally. Willie Adamas stands in. Swing and a miss. One ball, now one and two. two Nothing, nothing here in the bottom of the second. To the right side. A dive. He's got it. Takes it himself, and he got him. Nicely done at first for the out. Look at Keith Hernandez with the diving stop. Remember, this guy has the most gold gloves of any first baseman to ever play the game. Well, you can see why right there. Here's Luis Arias. Next pitch misses, and the count's full. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And good work there as he gets a 1-2-3. Three. three up, three down for Milwaukee. We'll move to the third with no score.
back here at the ballpark out of the third that, inning man. and stepping don't in for New him. York Tommy Pham and a 1-1 and that one lifted in the air center field makes the grab one down the right fielder Here's Starling Marte. He's 0 for 1. He's not going to get cheated up there. No, he's not. He's looking to do damage with every swing he takes. Next offering is in for a strike. Back to him with the breaking ball. Just got the corner. There's nothing you can really do with that. Swing and a miss. Couldn't catch up to the heater. Really love the pitch sequence right there. I'm telling you what, pitcher and catcher on the same page right now. And now here's Jeff McNeil. Popped out to left his first time. And a pitch. Popped up to the left. Into foul ground. And that's a foul ball. Goes down looking. And the Mets go down one, two, three. And we are still scoreless. Back here in Milwaukee, set for the bottom of the third. Up now for Milwaukee, Tyrone Taylor. Taylor. Next oh, offering right. upstairs. The pitch. And there's a foul ball. Two and two. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. The bat. The center field. Now it's Christian Yelich. Struck out looking at the bottom of the first. And he deals. Swing and a pop-off in foul ground. And a foul ball. And now it's even up. <laughs> Left hand batter waits. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Slider got him for strike three. Back-to-back -back strikeouts to start the frame, and that's now three in a row. Yeah, he's really settling in and getting a feel for his pitches, throwing them where he wants to right now. So we'll see how long he can keep this streak going. The count two and one. Out towards right center field. Nimmo running hard to get it. That skips over the fence, so it's an automatic double. The automatic double kind of feels like enjoying cruise control in your car, boo. You don't need to keep the pedal down as you cruise into second base. Just no worries in the world. You know what? He put a really good swing on that one. And the batter will be the shortstop, Robin Yell. And he's already singled in this game. Runner leads away at second. Yell tries to hold up, appeal to first, and he went around. That's ruled to swing. This to center field. Pulls it down and he makes the catch. And that'll do it. Milwaukee leaves one. Still no score. And welcome back as we go to the top of the fourth. And stepping in for New York, Keith Hernandez. Hernandez. 1-1 now. 
Well, these Mets, as this game goes on, have to be more disciplined at the plate. So many of their outs have come from weak contact on pitches. They're chasing outside of the strike zone. You can't do much of anything with those locations, and that's been true again today. Two-two now. Line drive makes the catch, and there's one gone. And as a pitcher, when the hitters are swinging at everything, you feel no need to challenge inside the zone. You just keep working the corners and expanding that strike zone and beyond, and they just keep eating right out of your hand. Next offering is foul back. Here's the 2 2. Just misses the mark outside the zone. One down, base is empty. And a pop-up, right side, foul territory. Fielder brings it in with a nice run and grab. The third base, number five, David Wright. And next for the Mets, David Wright. This guy has turned into a beast. In the air, fairly deep to right field. He makes the grab, and that is that. Down in order go the Mets, and we're still knotted at zero. Back here at American Family go, Field, go, go, ready go, to go, 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 bottom four. And here's fielder. the first baseman, Prince, Prince Fielder. Fielder. And strike two. Well, these Brewers just lacking discipline at the plate in this ballgame. So many of their outs have come from weak contact on pitches. They're chasing outside of the strike zone. You can't do much of anything with those locations, and it's been true again today. Still two and two after the foul ball. Kicks and fires. Swing and a miss for the strikeout. Slider got him for strike three. Quite the start to this game on the mound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking Catch very right. dangerous to these hitters. Yeah, yeah. Seven punch outs already. Yeah, so right, this right, lineup right. hasn't had much success trying to figure him out. I'm impressed with what we're seeing here. William Contreras up now for the Brewers. Here comes a pitch. And as a pitcher, when the hitters are swinging at everything, you feel no need to challenge inside the zone. You just keep working the corners and expanding that strike zone and beyond, and they just keep eating right out of your hand. This ball's chopped on the ground. Whips it to first. Gets the catcher by a step. Now back, the designated hitter, Greg. Next is the designated hitter, Greg Vaughn. The wind of the pitch. Yeah, that's too high. Looks like he's being a little cautious with him in this at bat after doubling the first time up. Doesn't want to make another mistake. Next offering clips the zone count even at two. Swing and that ball smashed on a line. Coming on is Fam to make the play. Three up, three down for him there. On to the top of the fifth we go. We're tied. Nothing, nothing. Welcome back. Ready now for the fifth inning. Now up to hit Francisco Lindor. 
Lindor. The 3 1. Swing and a miss as he was out front that time. And so the lefty allows the leadoff free pass. Oh, well, he tried to nibble right there and just missed his spot. The hitter didn't back. offer at it. The now he has somebody to worry about over at first. So up next for New York, Brandon Nimmo. 0 for 1, he grounded out in his first at bat. At the belt and fires. And he takes a strike with two strikes. May see some movement over there at first base, try to stay out of a double play here. Popped up to the left into foul ground, and no one could get to it. It's a foul ball. Two two. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Pulled the string on the changeup. Way out in front of that inside pitch there, and just exactly the opposite kind of approach that you want with two strikes. You want to let the ball travel. Make sure you recognize it. Try to shorten up so that you can at least put the ball in play. Clearly fooled, but I think even more so, you question the two strike approach. At the play, Francisco Alvarez. a swing and a miss. That's the second out. Thought it was a pretty good pitch. Top of the strike zone. We're seeing more fastballs in that location. Hitters, especially with two strikes, have to be ready to pull the trigger. Here's Tommy Pham. Flied out to center in his first at bat. Here's a 1 1. Oh. Next offering misses down and away. Pop jump. That is the inning. Mets leave one halfway through this one. Still no score. We head to the bottom of the fifth, and now it's going to be Willie Adamas. Swing and a miss. And a count one and two. Meanwhile, activity in the bullpen. Jose Quintana appears to be getting loose. Carrasco getting cranked up as well. And a pitch. Inside, Swing and a miss, and he was fooled. Gets to it on to first. In time to get him, one away in the strikeout. It's almost like he's telling the guys in the bullpen, stand down, I got this. Next for the Brewers, Luis Urias. He was a strikeout victim his first time. The pitch. And a foul ball, he stays alive. And it's even up. That's a really good take right there. Slider down and in. Very difficult to get on the same plane and do anything with. Into center. Nimmo has it sized up. Makes the grab for the second out. The right fielder, number 15. Tyrone. Now it's the right fielder, Tyrone Taylor. He struck out swinging at his first at bat. This guy makes great contact. One of the best in the game 
and putting bat on ball. He's got such quick hands, and he's gaining pitch recognition. That keeps him square to the plate. There's a good chance that his bat stays in the zone a long time, and that produces solid contact consistently. This guy's seen two change-ups in a row. Could be a little vulnerable for a fastball right here. The pitch. Up the middle, McNeil gets him easily, ends the inning. Brewers go down quietly. Sixth inning coming up, still nothing on the scoreboard. Back here in Milwaukee, start of the sixth, John Chomby with Chris Singleton. And leading off, Starling Marte. Marte. And the pitch. Slapped foul. The wind of the pitch. Contreras puts it away for the out. And there's one away. The batter number one. Second base. Jeff. Jeff. Now the number McNeil. two hitter, Jeff McNeil. Kicks and deals. Bunting, and it's right in front of the plate. To first, and he beats it. Maybe a little small ball is exactly what the doctor ordered to rev up this offense, and they've been pretty quiet all game, so maybe this wakes them up a bit and helps them get on the board. One gone runner at first. Keith Hernandez up now for the Mets. One for two. So now one and two. One ball, two straight. Swings and misses on the fastball up in the zone for the strikeout. Boog gets talked about a lot, but a good high fastball in a two-strike situation, it's just become such a problem for hitters in more recent years. I mean, with all of the emphasis by pitchers on developing that spin rate, having a good grip on the baseball, those high fastballs, they kind of look like to the hitter that they're rising, even though they're not, but they're not decreasing in velocity and spin rate, so very difficult to get the barrel on it. And here it comes. Good eye in that spot. 3-2, two, two out, runner on first. A lot of movement in the infield. Hitter's got to stay focused on the pitch. David Wright waits on deck. Swing and a miss. Had him out front for the strikeout. I think the key is arm action on the changeup. When you can sell it like a fastball, you drop the velocity, you get the swing and miss, and you walk off the field. Back here at the ballpark, here's Yelich at the dish. He's a guy, Chris's highlights include some of the best throws from the outfield that you will ever see. Definitely one of the best arms of the sport. In the air to left center, Nimmo has it sized up. One away. The left fielder, number eight. Ryan Braun, up now for the Brewers. Really good piece of hitting last time going to the opposite field. The pitch. 3-2 now. He should get a pretty good pitch to hit here with three-hole hitter coming up if he's walked. So now 3-2. and two. 
fights it off. He'll see another. The wide to kick the pitch. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. So he's gotten deep into this game. And at least so far, not showing a ton of signs of fatigue. Yo. So up next, Robin Yell. In the air, center field. He's got it. And that is out number three. And welcome back. Top of inning number seven. Now here is David Wright. It's interesting he plays kind of a, a power spot defensively, but runs pretty well. So when you're looking at that position, you're not expecting someone that has maybe above average speed, but he does. And I think that skill set really upgrades the position because when you have that kind of speed, it makes the whole team that much better. Check swing, tried to hold up, now an appeal to first. And ring him up, says Patrick Johnson. That's a strikeout. And now it's now Frankie bad Lindor, bad. a switch hitter batting right. What about him playing another position on defense, one that would require a little more range? Absolutely, and I think if push came to shove where they had to make a, a move during a game, it'd surprise a lot of people. You might even be able to put him in center field. Lindor checks his swing. Now an appeal to first. And he went around, according to Patrick Johnson. Here's the center now fielder, Adam. Brandon Nimmo. He's Brandon. a big, strong guy. Can untie this game with one swing. That's hard hit on the line. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And that is that. Jose Quintana gets handed the rock out of the pen. He's making his second appearance of the season. Jose Quintana. Prince Fielder up now for the Brewers. Who's 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. Here's a 1-1. One, one. And that skips into dirt. Out towards left center, Lindor under this one. And out number one on the grab. Oh, that's a tough now play for the infielder, ranging back pitch. into the outfield. Ooh, There's part of him that's saying, hey, where are you at, outfielder? Call me off. But he stayed focused and made a nice catch right there. Here's the Brewers catcher now, William Contreras. The 1-1. One -one. Swings through that. He got away with one there, but he knows he can't go into that spot very often against a guy like this. The next offering misses, and it's two and two. Action in the pen down there. David Robertson up and loosening in the pen. Rayleigh, a left-hander, also throwing. The 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Chase the fastball up the ladder for strike three. Now it's going to be that. Greg Vaughn. The designated hitter. Greg Vaughn. And now the lefty. So a foul ball makes it one and two. His eyes got big. He saw that change up way out in front. Better to pull it than to get jammed on something off speed like that. 
And now the count is even. You see how the catcher wanted that pitch up and in. Want to try to tie him up. That's the one thing we're seeing, that high fastball. You have to get it up there because of how hitters have changed their swings. Right side. And that ends the inning. So the Brewers bring on a new pitcher from the pen, Justin Wilson. He has a great slider with tons of movement. And now the catcher comes up to him, Francisco Alvarez. The lefty ready. And a 1 1. Good eye right there. The pitch. That's ball three. At this point in the game, you cannot issue free passes. He's going to have to challenge this hitter. Hitter's got to be ready to swing it. Tommy Pham up next. 3 1 now. And now the count filled up three and two. It's a hitter. You don't know what to expect here in the three two. If he'll throw a breaking ball three one, he'll do it again three two. Got him. Breaking ball clips the outside edge. No, I'd say that was a pretty generous call right there. And when a pitcher's getting that call, there's really not much you can do about it as a hitter. And you know what? Guys today are so disciplined to stay with their approach and game plan. Not surprised at all that he took that pitch. And here is Tommy Pham. Next pitch has popped up. He's under it. Makes the catch for the second out. Back to the top of the lineup. Starling Marte up to hit. Oh, look out here. He's going to come up ready to swing in this situation. The 1-1. One, one. Just missed. Movement in Milwaukee's bullpen. Matt Bush up and throwing for manager Craig Council. Two one pitches in there, and the count is even. Is there a little wrinkle to that? I think there was. Yeah. A little slider action. Now a screamer into the outfield. And the inning is over. Nothing doing for the offense that time. Home half of inning number eight straight ahead. And we still have no score. On to the bottom of the eighth. Here's the second baseman, Willie Adamas. Second baseman, Willie Adamas. Ball on a strike. And a curve is down and in. And that one off the outside edge. Luis Urias waiting for a turn at the plate. Swung on, belted. Nimmo on a dead sprint, racing back. Pulls it in on the warning track. Man, I love that route. The ball was smoked. He knew he had to get back to the track right away. Turned his back on the infield. Got to the spot, turned around, and made a nice catch. That one misses. Two and one. And a pitch. Swing and a miss, and now two and two. Boog, it looked like that curveball backed up on him, and although it's a mistake, it works out really good for the pitcher. The hitters timed it up, expects it to be to a certain spot, and it just doesn't get there. 
outside corner got him looking. He can't believe it. Well, it's just a great job of playing catch with the catcher. Exactly where the catcher set up is where he threw that pitch and probably fooled the umpire a little bit because there was no budge at all. Next for Milwaukee, Tyrone Taylor. Taylor started after it, tried to hold up. Now a look to first, no swing. 2-2 two -two now. Got him. That's his second strikeout. Nothing doing here this half. Ninth inning coming up, and we still have no score. Welcome back. We go to the ninth, and now Jeff McNeil. In the air, out towards left center. He's got it. One up, one down. That's a really nice play, ranging back into the outfield for that catch. We all know those could be a little tricky, especially if the wind's swirling around out there. So digging in, Keith Hernandez. You know, this is kind of a tough matchup as a left-handed hitter facing a left-handed pitcher. What you tell yourself is, I want to stay square to the plate, try to hit the ball over the shortstop's head. Here comes the pitch. Got him! Now two away. And now it's the polar bear, Pete Alonso. One for three. Now this is in the air down the line. And that drops foul. Struck him out swinging. Some high cheese for strike three. Offense held in check there. To the bottom of the ninth we go. Top of the order, Dua. And we still have no score. Back here at American Family Field. Bottom nine. And now the center fielder, Christian Yelich. Line, and that's a base hit. Always feels amazing getting a job done when the team needs you to come through. It's just bigger than your own individual stats. Really good swing right there. He got a pitch that he knew he could handle, allowed himself to stay back just a tad bit longer, and he hit the ball on the screws. Substitution now at first base. On to pinch run, Garrett Mitchell. No outs, runner at first. Here's the left fielder, Ryan Broad. That's towards center. He's under it. Squeezes it. And there's one away. And now the shortstop, Robin Yen. He's turned into one of the best shortstops in the game. If you don't get ahead in the count, you can forget about having any success against it. Kicks and fires. There goes the runner. Laser could be extra bases. And now it gets into the corner. Around third. Across is the winning run. And they walk it off. Well, it's always great when you've got pretty good speed over there at first base. Somebody that can score all the way around the bases. What a tremendous swing and execution by both the batter and the base runner for this walk-off win. one nothing the final. For Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show, I'm John Chambi saying so long.
the final line score for our ball game this afternoon. For the victorious Brewers, one run on six hits, no errors. They left three men on base. For the Mets, no runs, three hits, no errors. They left four men on base. Time of the ball game, a swift two hours and 19 minutes. Our paid attendance at American Family Field this afternoon, 41,900. The Brewers thank you for attending today's game and remind you to please drive home safely.
pressure I built for myself. All of the. Yeah, yeah.